Hi class, in this module we're going to talk about growing limes and lemons. We're going to start with our lemons and true lemons or citrus limon are native to Southeast Asia. And what we found through genetic studies is that it's actually a hybrid, a naturally occurring hybrid between the bitter orange and a citron. Lemon juice is actually very acidic. It's about five to six percent citric acid um, by volume and it's got a pH of around 2.2. So it's actually used in a lot of cleaning products for that ability to kind of cut through grease and that acid breaks down different things. That's where the sour taste of our lemons and limes comes from, is from that citric acid content. It's a yellow kind of ellipse shaped fruit as we all know. It's a very distinctive shape. Um, and it is actually one of the most popular containerized citrus varieties um, out of any of the citrus. The lemons tend to be grown in pots on patios, in our backyards more than anything else. Lemon trees also bear fruit year round. This is somewhat unusual. You'll see mature fruit or maybe small green fruits right alongside blossoms and developing fruits. So they will actually bear sort of year round and you'll get all the different stages of fruit production and blossoming all on one tree. It's pretty neat. Um, it's very cold sensitive, however. One of the downsides of lemons and limes both is that they're not very cold hardy at all. If you remember that chart we talked about earlier, they're very, very sensitive, hence why they're so popular to grow in containers or pots. If they're grown in a container or a pot and you've got some cold weather coming, it's fairly easy to get that hauled into the house or to a garage somewhere where it can be protected from the cold weather and then you can enjoy your lemon or your lime tree for many years to come. Starting in with some of the lemon varieties. Very popular cultivar, the improved Meyer lemon. Now we've heard of Meyer lemons before, this is an improved cultivar, um, it's a little better flavor, a little better size. It's actually not a true lemon, it's a cross between a lemon and a sweet orange. That's what gives it some of this more um, rounded shape and a little bit milder flavor. It's not quite as acidic as a true lemon. It is a small tree, staying between 6 and 10 feet unless it's on a dwarfing rootstock, in which case it makes a really nice looking patio tree that stays pretty small and manageable. It has thin skin, um, fruit with yellow smooth rind, and it does have seeds, unfortunately. Um, it's medium fruit, it's very juicy compared to the regular Meyer lemon, so this improved cultivar is slightly more juicy, and it's a sweeter flavor. And again, that's because it's not a true lemon, it's got that sweet orange genetics in it that's contributing to that with the fruit. Uh, the mature Meyer trees can withstand temperatures as low as 20 degrees for short periods, but we do start to see some damage to the trees and even some defoliation of the leaves at that temperature range. So if you can, it's better to cover or protect these um, rather than sort of leaving them to the mercy of the cold. Next up we have the Ponderosa lemon. This one's a little less common in our area, but we do see it grown occasionally. It's also not a true lemon. It's actually a cross or a hybrid between a pomelo and a citron. And it's got kind of a rounded shape. That's where those genetics come from. It's a large, thick-skinned fruit, so it's not quite easy to peel, but usually these are used for juice or cut in half and scooped out. Um, and it's the size of a grapefruit. So this is a very, very large lemon. Uh, a lot of bang for your buck with these fruits. They can weigh up to two pounds each. The mature trees are up to 24 feet tall, so make sure you give these a lot of space. Ponderosa lemons get very large. Um, if you can get them on a dwarfing rootstock, however, that's very uncommon. It's typically grown um, in your backyard, and if you do get the dwarf one, it makes an attractive container plant. The fruit is very similar to your everyday standard lemon um, when it comes to flavor and acidity. So, Consider a ponderosa lemon if you have the space or if you can find one dwarfed, it makes a great container plant and it's a conversation piece. Everyone thinks a two pound lemon is pretty neat. This one's really attractive, especially as a patio plant. The Eureka variegated pink lemon has these beautiful striped variegated leaves and even the rind of the fruit itself is variegated with, orange, uh, with yellow and green stripes. But then when you cut into it, there's another surprise. The inside flesh is actually a light pink color. 
Um, they sometimes call this a pink lemonade tree because when you squeeze that, there is a little bit of a pink tinge to that lemon juice that comes out. Mature trees can get up to 15 feet tall. And that is a really beautiful variegated foliage. Um, it's got patches of creamy yellow splashed with uh, green coloration. And those young lemons do tend to show more striping than the fully mature, um, more yellow colored lemons. When they're ready for, for picking, they do kind of lose that variegation, but they do still have that pale pink inside. Unfortunately, the Eureka variegated pink lemon is very cold sensitive. That's why it's typically grown as a patio plant in a planter or some kind of container or pot, um, because this is one you definitely want to protect if we have any cold weather below 32 degrees. The Lisbon lemon, this is a very classic lemon. It's an old heirloom variety, and it's actually very cold hardy, which is a great asset in our area where we do get occasional cold fronts and freezes. Mature trees are about 15 feet by 30 feet, or 15, let me try that again. The Lisbon lemon is a very old heirloom variety that I wish we'd see more in this area because it is quite cold tolerant compared to many of the lemon cultivars. The mature trees can get 15 to 30 feet tall and about 25 feet wide, so they do need quite a bit of space in our backyard orchards. One downside to the Lisbon is that they can be very thorny uh, many of the improved or more refined newer varieties of lemons don't have the thorniness of their branches. Um, however, this being an heirloom, they still do have that thorn, um, which can be quite sharp and not any fun to start pruning on. They do have large juicy fruit with a few seeds. They're not too seedy um, and fruit can be overripe if left on the tree. So it's better to pick these as soon as they ripen and use them right away or freeze the juice. Lisbon lemon is a nice choice for the New Orleans area if you can find them. Here's a nice chart of all the different kinds of lemons we just discussed and their comparative size. And you can see how much larger that Ponderosa is compared to the Eureka, which is quite small, the Lisbon and the Meyer are more what we think of as like a grocery store type lemon, um, really more of a shape or size we would expect. But this is a nice side-by-side -side comparison of all the four different cultivars that we've discussed. Digging into limes, limes are a lot of fun to grow. A lime is a citrus tree that's typically round or somewhat oblong and about an inch to two inches, inch and a half in diameter. Um, it has a distinctive flavored fruit that they can actually produce and bear year round, similar to a lemon. So you'll see flowers, you'll see fruit on the same tree. There's several species of citrus known as a lime. So just because we call all of these things limes doesn't mean that genetically they're that closely related, which is sort of interesting. The most popular limes that we see are the Persian lime, which is actually a hybrid between the key lime and a lemon. And that's the most popular cultivar of lime grown worldwide. The key lime is another type. And then the macaret, um, formerly known as a kaffir lime, we now refer to it as a macaret lime, and that's actually grown for its leaves. And we have a good video about that that we'll include with this course, and we'll talk more about those. Limes, unfortunately, are the most cold sensitive citrus out of all the citrus um, that we're discussing in this class. If you look at that cold hardiness chart, they're at the very bottom. So they can be a little tricky to grow in our area where we do experience some cold weather. They're usually the first things to die. Digging into some of the cultivars, this is our Persian lime. It's a beautiful tree. It's a medium-sized thornless tree, about 15 to 20 feet tall. And that thornlessness is an asset, um, especially when you're getting in there picking. It's easily grown in containers. You can find it on a dwarf rootstock often. Um, and it has small to medium fruits that are picked green and they turn yellow when they're overripe or becoming overly mature. So it's good to pick them and test them periodically when they still have that green rind. The fruit is seedless, which is a nice thing about the Persian lime. The key lime, now we've all heard about key lime pie. This is where that comes from. Key limes are a mature tree, um, about medium in stature, six to th 13 feet tall but easily grown in containers. And there's all of these patio key limes available in the trade from your nurseries, from your garden centers that are on a dwarf rootstock, and they make just a really attractive sort of miniature key lime tree for your backyard. 
It's a smooth, thin, rinded fruit with some seeds. So there's usually about 10 to 15 seeds in each fruit. Um, and they're very juicy. Uh, these are grown primarily for their juice, which of course is a key ingredient in your key lime pie. They're also known as bartender's lime or Mexican lime because they're fantastic in a drink as well. And here's our macrut lime. Now, we don't grow these for their fruit. If you look at this, it's got a very thick rind, it's full of seeds, it's not very juicy, and it's actually grown for the leaves, which are used in many culinary traditions, um, Indian food, Thai food. Um, they have a wonderful citrus aroma and citrus flavor. You can slip them into a curry. A uh, lot, of, lot of different ethnicities use these leaves to cook. It's grown primarily for that. They have a double leaf, so they're easy to recognize. And this tree is somewhat thorny, um, or quite thorny, and it can get about 35 feet tall if you allow it to. Um, I've seen these actually grown more as an herb for their leaves to use in cooking, and they're usually trees put in a pot and kept quite small for that purpose.